Let us pray. Loving God, you created us to live with the birds of the air, animals of the land and sea, trees, flowers, plants, and our brothers and sisters around the world. Open our minds, touch our hearts, and guide us in ways of care and concern for all you have gifted us. We ask this in your Son's name. Amen. I said good morning to all. We begin this morning's worship session with our theme song, number 843. Detroit hymn number 369.
Good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Happy Sunday, even though it is a hot Sunday. Today our Mass is celebrated for the 15th Sunday after Pentecost, and we are in our second week of the season of creation. Today we celebrate Land Sunday. We begin with our opening sentence. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth stand in awe of him. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed Lord and Father. Enable us by your grace to offer the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, to proclaim and respond to your holy word. Teach us to pray for your world and your church. Grant that we, confessing our sins, may worthily offer to you our souls and bodies as a living sacrifice, and eat and drink of your spiritual food in this holy sacrament. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Trust in you with all our hearts, for 
as you always resist the proud, who confide in their own strength, so you never forsake those who make their boast of your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Almighty God, whose Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, did high upon the cross that he might draw the whole world to himself, mercifully grant that we, who glory in the mystery of our redemption, may have grace to take up our cross and follow him, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting. Together we say the prayer for protection against natural disasters. Almighty and everlasting God, Lord of heaven and earth, grant unto us, your suppliant people, protection against hurricane, earthquake, and other calamities that of weather, we may rejoice in the comfort we ever desire, and may always make right use of your bountiful goodness. O oh Lord, Amen. Please sit for the ministry of the word. A reading from the word of God, written in the book of Genesis, the third chapter beginning at the 14th verse. The Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, cursed are you among all animals and among all world creatures. Upon your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head, and you will strike his heel. To the woman he said, I will greatly increase your pangs in childbearing. In pain you shall bring forth children. Yet your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. And to the man he said, Because you have listened to the voice of your wife, and have eaten of the tree about which I commanded you, you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face you shall eat bread until you return to the ground. For out of it you are taken. You are dust, and to dust you shall return. Cain said to his brother Abel, Let us go out to the field. And when they were in the field, Cain rose up against his brother Abel and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, Where is your brother Abel? He said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? And the Lord said, What have you done? Listen, your brother's blood is crying out to me from the ground. And now you are cursed from the ground, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you till the ground, it will no longer yield to you its strength. You will be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth. Cain said to the Lord, my punishment is greater than I can bear. Today you have driven me away from the soil, and I shall be hidden from your face. I shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth, and anyone who meets me may kill me. Then the Lord said to him, Not so. Whoever kills Cain will suffer a sevenfold vengeance. And the Lord put a mark on Cain, so that no one who came upon him would kill him. Then Cain went away from the presence of the Lord and settled in the land of Nod, east of Eden. 
This is the word of the Lord. Psalm number 139, verse 7 to 10. the word of God, written in the letter of Paul to the Romans, the fifth chapter, beginning at the twelfth verse. Romans 5, verses 12 to 17. Just as sin came into the world through one man, and death came through sin, and so death spread to all because all has sinned. Sin was indeed the in the world before the law, but sin is not reckoned when there is no law. Yet death exercised dominion from Adam to Moses, even over those who were not like the transgression of Adam, who was a type of the one who was to come. But the free gift is not like the transpass for, for if the many died through the one man's transpass, much more surely have the grace of God and the free gift in the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abundant for the many and the free gift is not like the effect of the of the one man sin for the judgment following one transpass but accommodation but the free gift following many transpasses br brings justification if what because of the one man's transpass death exercised dominion through that one much more surely will those res will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness and dominion in the life through one man, Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. 
The gradual hymn number 458. According to St. Matthew, the 12th chapter, and beginning at the 38th verse. At that time, some of the scribes and Pharisees said to Jesus, Teacher, we wish to see a sign from you. But he answered them, An evil and adulterous generation acts for a sign, but no sign will be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For just as Jonah was for three days and three nights in the, body, in the belly of the sea monster, so for three days and three nights the Son of Man will be in the heart of the earth. This is the Gospel of Christ. Sunday school.
God is not sleeping. Let us pray. Give us grace, O Lord, not only to hear thy word with our ears, but also to receive it into our hearts and to show it forth in our lives for the glory of thy great name. Amen. I recently came across a reflection by Austin Bonds quoting Mary Crowley, which said, Every evening I turn my worries over to God. He's going to be up all night anyway. Perhaps Crowley's words are based on Psalm 129, 3 to 4. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. Psalm 121 is a bold word for the weary. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth, the writer declares in the beginning. While every follower of Jesus can turn to this short song for clarity and strength in times of uncertainty, it takes on a new perspective when coupled with the words of the psalm thank you, appointed for today, 139 verses 7 to 10. These short but insightful verses also remind us that God is not sleeping. As a matter of fact, they remind us that he is omnipresent, meaning present everywhere at all times, omniscient, meaning all-knowing, and, and omnipotent, meaning all-powerful. These are three hopeful observations about God's character. But today I wish to focus on his omnipresence, his commando type 24-7 vigilance of his creation. This is good news to those who know and love God, because no matter where we go or what we do, we are never far from God's presence. At the beginning of Psalm 139, David refers to God as his Lord. In Hebrew, Yahweh, which is the proper name for God, meaning to exist. According to one Bible commentary, David is establishing that God's existence does not conform to our understanding of time or space, hence his ability to be omnipresent. David asks God a rhetorical question. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? He already knows the answer to this question that we already know. Nowhere. Since God exists beyond the confines of space, he is able to be in every place that we go and to see everything that we do, the good, the bad, and the in-between. If we ascend to heaven, he is there. If we make our bed in Sheol, he is there. Sheol is used throughout the Old Testament to mean the grave or the place of the dead. It is the opposite of heaven, the lowest place to be. While we may expect to encounter the presence of God in the highest or most glorious places, David is saying that he is in the dark and low ones as well. Remember the chorus of that Linda Randall song? And the God of the mountain is still God in the valley. When things go wrong, he'll make them right. And the God of the good times is still God in the bad times. The God of the day is still God of the night. So my brothers and sisters in Christ, God dwells everywhere that can be imagined, from the lowest Hades to the highest heaven. If we try to escape God by riding the wings of the dawn or by dwelling in the remotest part of the sea, he still pursues us and leads us. For the people of Israel, the dawn would have been one end of the earth and the horizon to which it spread would be the other. So if we were to start at the one end of the earth and go as quickly as the dawn spread all the way to the known end of the earth, God would be there. 
This, again, is a picture of two opposites that include everything in between. Just as God dwells in all spiritual dimensions, from Hades to heaven, God also dwells in every physical place. The story of the prophet Jonah, referenced in today's gospel from Matthew 12, tells of how God instructed him to go out to the city of Nineveh to warn its inhabitants that they were about to suffer terrible consequences if they did not stop sinning. However, Jonah did not want to go, and though God was sleeping, and thought God was sleeping, so he tried to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Apparently, Tarshish is at the far western end of the Mediterranean Sea. It was like going on the wings of the dawn to the end of the earth. However, as Jonah was traveling across the sea, the Lord sent a storm to torment the boat until Jonah realized that he had not escaped the presence of the Lord. He was thrown overboard to stop the storm and the Lord sent a fish to swallow him up for three days. There in the belly of the fish, Jonah was reminded that God is not sleeping and he, knowing that even in the depth of the sea, Yahweh is there, says, I called out of my distress to the Lord, and he answered me. I cried for help from the depth of Sheol. You heard my voice. Jonah 2, 2. Thus, even in the depths of the sea, in the belly of a fish, God was with Jonah. Not only that, but he proved that what David says in Psalm 139, 9, even there, your hand will lead me. As far from God as Jonah felt in that moment, as far as we can feel sometimes or be, David wants, us to, wants to make it very clear that God's right hand will take hold of us to remind us as we journey through life that he definitely isn't sleeping. The description of God's right hand on us is also significant. The dominant hand in Hebrew literature is the right hand. It is the symbol of strength and dominion. Just as God's love has no bounds, God's strength has no limitations. He is an able helper. The psalmist says that our help is from the one who made heaven and earth. Our creator, God, is able more than able, Ephesians 3.20 tells us. God is capable, and he is waiting for us to let go of the prideful thoughts we have that we are able to either live or do things without him. He is also waiting for us to realize that because he isn't sleeping, he knows our thoughts, words, and actions. Consider the Adam and Eve saga. Look how even though they knew God was with them in the garden and had sought to provide them with everything they needed. They still were not satisfied and failed to heed his warning. All of them, including the serpent, were disobedient to God. Typical human behavior. I figure, we believe that if we don't acknowledge his presence, we can get away with behaving as though he is not there. Lest we forget, God is not sleeping or does not sleep. So when we yield to the temptation of doing as we please to the detriment of ourselves, of others, I assure you, we will suffer the consequences, if not immediately, eventually. Look at how Adam and Eve and the serpent were cursed by God for their disobedience. But thank God for his grace and atonement or we would all be still paying for that initial sin and the sins of succeeding generations, including our own. God helps us through his Son and through the Holy Spirit. Furthermore, he prays for us to faithfully endure during seasons of weakness. Help also comes through a warning from perhaps a spouse, family member, a friend, clergy, or even a stranger to reconsider our choices. In short, between the Holy Trinity, a spouse, 
family and friends, this collective cloud of witnesses surrounding and enlightening us is substantial help delivered from God on high. Therefore, I urge you never to forget his presence working for, in, and through our lives. In addition to God never sleeping, he is eternally alert. The God who keeps you will not doze will not doze off at 10 p.m. watching the latest show on Netflix, the latest news on NBC, or scrolling through messages on a smartphone. He doesn't need the recommended seven to nine hours of rest because he's rejuvenated to begin the next day. <clears throat> no, he's available every minute of every day for the entirety of our lives and into eternity. But please note that God has his own sense of timing. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day, 2 Peter 3, 8. He has perfect timing, never early, never late. God is never in a hurry, but he is always on time. It takes a little patience and a lot of faith, but he is worth waiting for. The prophet Isaiah says that those who wait on the Lord will find renewed strength. God alone renews our strength to do all that is required of us. We need rest for the body and the mind, but he does not faint or grow weary. God is always awake for our sake, and that is why those of us who are Christians can boldly caution any person, animal, or thing that seeks to harm, deceive, or treat us unjustly. Our God is not sleeping. Jah is our keeper. Consider now the Cain and Abel saga. Cain's anger was undoubtedly rooted in pride. He couldn't bear that his brother was accepted before God and he was not. So he killed his brother Abel. Of course, we may want to blame who raised Cain and who brought sin into this world, his parents. Adam and Eve, perhaps their sinful nature developed in their children. For as a friend of mine always says, you don't get dunks from sugar apple trees. Hopefully, Abel, even as he took his last breath, knew that God is not sleeping and therefore Cain's murder of him could never go unnoticed or unpunished. Cain, like his parents and the serpent, suffered the consequences of God's judgment for his transgressions, but God still kept him because he chastens those he loves, meaning he corrects us for such unjust behaviors in an effort to reconcile us to himself. Parents love their children. Parents' love for their children can be deep, but it is a shadow of the infinite love God has for us his children. We have God's promise of his loving provision and blessed assurance that he will keep our lives. My brothers and sisters in Christ, if after all our transgressions against God and his created beings, he still seeks to treat us just, should not we do the same for each other? At every stage of our lives, we are prone to treat others unjustly or to be treated unjustly spouses who cheat, friends who use each other, and employers and employees who exploit one another. Virginia Mary in her commentary reminds us that Jesus drew the outcast and downtrodden to him and proclaimed that God had sent him to liberate the oppressed and bring God's favor where none was to be found. And while I am quite aware that there are a lot of global social justice issues being debated, like who needs to make reparations to who and how much. I wish to focus just for today on the injustices plaguing our homes, workplaces, schools, and neighborhoods, the mindsets that prevent us from being our brother or sister's keeper, the lies, infidelity, theft, murder, corruption, the blatant lack of respect for God, humanity, or self, so evident in this little country. This certainly is not what our creator intended when he created 
when he created us and subsequently walked on this earth so we could have his perfect example to follow. He taught us to forgive, to love each other, and not to pay back when hurt by others. God is righteous, and he, is desire and he desires mercy and justice from humanity. When God created Adam and Eve, they were made in his likeness, and they were like his own children. Unfortunately, sin entered the world and things were never the same again. Adam and Eve's disobedience, Cain's murder, the grumbling of the Israelites all invoke God's punishment. And they had to face his judgment as a consequence of their sins. God saw that man sinned against each other and conflicts arose out of selfishness, jealousy, pride, and vengeance. He instructed through the, the law and commandments to serve justice and do what is right before him. Thus the advice we receive in Amos 5.24, but let justice roll on like a river, righteousness like a never failing stream. And in Zechariah 7, 9 to 10, thus says the Lord of hosts, render true judgments, show kindness and mercy to one another. Do not oppress the widow, the fatherless, the sojourner, or the poor. And let none of you devise evil against another in your heart. God demands that we be fair to others and treat all with dignity and respect. Not only in the church, but in our homes, schools, workplaces, and communities. Micah 6, 8 says, what does the Lord require of you? to act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. Indeed, God is like a mighty judge who will render mercy to the innocent and punish those who take advantage of others. He is not sleeping. Ecclesiastes 3.17, God will bring into judgment both the righteous and the wicked, for there will be a time for every activity, a time to judge every deed. To, to not defend the innocent is a serious offense because God, as it is before God, as it is to treat others unfairly. So wherever we witness injustice, we need to step forward to help, to pray, to get the right help or guidance to ensure that justice prevails. But remember, it can happen to us too. There will be times of affliction that seem endless, like being in an abusive relationship. And one may face ridicule or persecution from others as one leads the Christian life. Scripture reminds us, beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God, for it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord, Romans 12:19. Remember the golden rule. God desires that we do to others what we expect them to do to us. Matthew 7, 12. God's compassion and justice go hand in hand. He is sure to stretch out his arm and help those who call out to him. Psalms 106, 3 states, Blessed are they who observe justice, who do righteousness at all times. So yes, we should, as individuals and as a church, get involved in matters of social injustice. The church is called not only to promote social justice in a preventative way, but also to speak up against already existent forms of injustice. How can we be a church family when we know Sister Roseanne, no Roseanne's in here, right? Sister Roseanne was beaten into submission before church this morning is saying, oh no, or gossiping behind her back, going to help her? How can we be a church family when we know this is only happening because her husband, Brother Max, no Max is right, who sings in the choir, was in the shop drinking the whole night? Are we letting justice flow when we turn a blind eye and forget God is not sleeping? As a church family, whatever affects one, affects all. However, 
when we take a stand, in this case against domestic violence and substance abuse, if our stands are not out of Christ-like love and gospel-shaped identity, then we must consider what truly is at the root of our stance. Allow the word of God to inspire and transform us, and then stand again with the right perspective. Brothers and sisters, let us not let go of our calling to represent the justice of God in this corrupt world. Let us not close our eyes on injustice. Let us speak up for the sake of the abused, the less fortunate, and the marginalized around us. Let us be light and salt for the sake and glory of the one who will always be just, for the honor of the gospel of Christ, in submission to the Spirit, and in hopeful experience of the return of the one who will bring eternal justice. Amen. Let us now confess our beliefs in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, of all that is seen or unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, true God from true God begotten, not made, one in being with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He was born of the Virgin Mary and for our sake. He suffered, died, and was buried. Third day he rose again. In fulfillment of the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. for the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our soul, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the peace and welfare of the world, for the witness and work of the church, and for the unity of all people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for our bishops and all ministers of God's word and sacrament, that there may be filled with, the, with truth and love and be found without fault at the Lord's coming. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the leaders of the nation and for those in authority among us, that there may serve justice and promote the freedom and dignity of all people, let us pray to the Lord. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression, and for all who labor in the case of human liberation and fulfillment, let us pray to the Lord. For the sick, the suffering, the sorrowful, and the dying, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. For deliverance from the ravage of hurricane, earthquake, drought, or flood, and for a just and proper use of God's creation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For ourselves 
and all who confess the name of Christ, that we may show forth the excellency of, his, of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. Lord have mercy. We will now have the church army prayer. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, whose Son Jesus Christ came not to be ministered unto, but to be ministered, we ask to bless all members of the church army in this and other land that following in the steps of your Son and giving themselves to the service of their fellow men, that they may be inspired by your love and so worthy minister in your name to the fallen, the friendless, and the needy for the sake of the same, your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. O Lord our God, accept the favor and praise of your people in the multitude of your mercy. Look with compassion on us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O Lord of love, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forevermore. Amen. The Act of Penitence If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us therefore confess our sins. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not loved ourselves as we ought. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us. And walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The kingdom of God is justice, peace, and joy inspired by the Holy Spirit. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us share that peace. God's peace. For the kiss of peace, we sing, peace is flowing like a river.
please be seated for the courses be presented by the church army. Terry Him number three hundred and seventy eight.
the presentation of the offerings. Father, we offer you these gifts which you have given us, this bread, this wine, this money. With them we offer ourselves, our lives, and our work to become, through your Holy Spirit, a reasonable, holy, and lively sacrifice. As this bread and wine become the body and blood of Christ, so may we and all your people become channels of your love through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. Father, our Creator God, we give you thanks because in your loving wisdom you brought all things into being and are truly worthy of praise from every creature you have made. Again and again we have turned away from you, yet in every age your steadfast love has called us to return, to live in union with you, for it is your eternal purpose to put new life into all things and make them holy. Through your Son, Jesus Christ who took our human nature upon him. You have redeemed the world from the bondage of sin, and by the power of your Holy Spirit, you have gathered the people to yourself to make known in every place his perfect offering, which he made to the glory of your name. Hear us, therefore, Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord, grant that these gifts of bread and wine may be unto us his body and blood. 
upon the night he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take this and eat it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. Heavenly Father, rejoicing in his holy incarnation, his blessed passion and his perfect sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, his mighty resurrection from the dead, his glorious ascension into heaven, and looking for his coming in glory, we offer to you this bread and this cup. We pray that you will accept this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, and grant that all who eat and drink of the body and blood of your Son, our great High may be renewed by your Holy Spirit and be one body, one spirit in him. Let faith and love increase in us. Unite us with all bishops, all other ministers of your word and sacraments, and with the whole people of God, living and departed, whom you have made for yourself. Confirm us in holiness, that we may be found ready to join the company of the blessed Virgin Mary, the holy apostles, and all your saints when our Lord Jesus Christ comes again, forever giving you thanks and praise through him from whom all good things do come, with him and in him and through him. By the power of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father Almighty, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven in songs of everlasting praise. Mm -hmm.
draw nearer and receive the body and blood of our Savior Jesus Christ with faith and thanksgiving. communion hymn number 611.
number 255. <laughs> Red and twenty three.
the blessing of the children 446. Number 666.
in prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for sharing us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Our help is in the name of the Lord. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen. Very good morning to each and everyone gathered here and on behalf of our priest in charge, Reverend Suze, I bid you a warm welcome to St. George Parish Church. To our online viewers, welcome. And if there are any visitors here with us this morning, I welcome you also with open arms. Glad that you have chosen St. George Parish Church as your church of worship for today as we at this church in keeping with our theme for this period of time celebrates Land Sunday. The period from the 1st of September to October the 4th has been designated the season of creation under the theme let justice and peace flow Amos chapter 5 verse 24 condolences it is with deep regret that we announce the passing of sister Loretta Gittins a former member sorry Liotta Gittins a former member of the church army and mother's union here at St. George Church. To her entire family, we offer our deepest sympathy. Arrangements for her funeral service will be announced at a later date. Rest eternal grant unto her, O Lord. May she rest in peace. Amen. The members of the Usher's Guild wish to express their sincere thanks and appreciation to everyone who supported This Is My Story, This Is My Song, which was held last Sunday evening. Your support was indeed very good, and we look forward to that continued support as we celebrate again next year. Glad to see you this morning, Mr. Marshall, also. Welcome. We offer congratulations to Lionel and Odin Yard, two of our online viewers from Brooklyn, New York, who are celebrating later on this week, the 61st wedding anniversary. The two of them were married here at St. George on September the 15th, 1962. Our sister Frida Nichols, JP or L Y, who normally attends the 7 a.m. Mass and who is the president of Olympians Barbados, will be attending the World Olympians Forum in Istanbul, Turkey from September the 14th to the 18th as a guest of the World Olympians Association. 
we wish her every blessing and may God accept all prayers for a safe and successful business trip. She was here at the 7 o'clock mass this morning. Planning meeting. Parish planning meeting. Saturday, September the 16th at Pomeroy Jean and Norma Holder Hospitality Institute, Hastings Christ Church from 9.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. The members of the PCC and the leader or representative of all the church organizations are invited to attend. The church bus will leave the car park at 8.30 a.m. Saturday the 16th parish planning meeting. Members of the men's fellowship are reminded of their monthly meeting on Saturday the 16th at 4.30 in the church. The St. George Park Church picnic is scheduled for Sunday, October the 8th and it will be held at Cogiton College, St. John. Buses will be available for transportation and you can also get your lunch on site by placing your orders before the picnic day. So, Sunday, October the 8th is our parish picnic at Cogiton College, St. John. If you so desire, you can place your name in the North Porch for transport and also for lunch. Transport will leave here at 9 o'clock the morning time and the church service is expected to start at 9.30 followed by fellowship, food, and fun. In that order. More information as the time draws near. The members of our Mother's Union presents Mothers in Action, a concert celebrating its 61st anniversary. It will be held on Sunday, November the 19th at 4 p.m. here. Again, more information as it comes to hand. As you may be aware, school for some students will be starting this week, especially the private primary and secondary schools, and next week, certainly for the other private, for the other public primary and secondary schools. And we want to take this opportunity to wish all of our children the very best as they return to school and to encourage them to do their best, to listen to their teachers, right, Mr. Rook? and to obey their parents and to be good students. We have done our best by talking. It's up to them to do their part. Congratulations. Celebrating today the 63rd wedding anniversary, Hampton and Rose King. And Rose was here at the 6 a.m. mass this morning. You may know them, you want to call them and wish them all the best as they celebrate today, 63rd wedding anniversary. On Tuesday, Richard and Yvonne Dugid will celebrate their 31st wedding anniversary and Yvonne was here at the 7 a.m. mass. And on Thursday the 14th, Adrian and Elcock, Adrian and El Anne Elcock will celebrate their 27th wedding anniversary. And on Friday the 15th, as I said earlier, Lionel and Odin Yard from the New York will celebrate their 61st wedding anniversary. Congratulations to all of them. In the birthday corner, celebrating, and I've been given permission to say this here, celebrating her 73rd birthday today is Wilma Trotman, one of our ushers, and she's here with us.
and joining with her is Esther Mears. On Tuesday, Janet Craigwell will celebrate her birthday and she was here this morning at the 6 a.m. Mass. On Thursday the 14th, the man of the moment, Winston Farrell, will celebrate his birthday and sharing that day with him, celebrating his 81st birthday is George Graffit, well-known cricketer. And celebrating on Friday, the 15th, Ale Thornhill, who is here with us. Or perhaps she's at Sunday school. And to all others, celebrating anniversaries or birthdays. And did not want me to get up here and let Barbados and all our online viewers know that you're celebrating. Have a good one. Enjoy to the maximum. And to all of you, I wish you a blessed day. Thanks once again for coming here. You sang your songs. You heard the word. You heard the message. You partake of the blessed sacraments. And you are blessed beyond control. And as you leave here and go back into the community, take those blessings with you and share them. I wish you all the best until we meet again. Thank you very much. Thank you. The recessional hymn, All My Hope on God is Founded, from Mission Prayers, hymn number 16.
Lord be with you. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Have a good week. Thank you.